Hey, Ken. What a pleasure to hang out with you, man. I've enjoyed looking at your car. It's, I, I am amazed with it. 185 mile an hour. Yep. Bonneville Salt Flats. Folks, I want to treat you with something that's really special. For all you Flathead Ford fans and your Bonneville Salt Flans, this is where it's at. I enjoyed this so much and talking to this guy. Come down from Massachusetts to visit with me. Ken McCook, McCook Racing, holds the world record in three different places at Bonneville. That's right. And uh, he has shown me about this car and and uh, people like Wally Wilson and and uh, Bill Ryan and all has looked at it in amazement. When you crank it up, it'll just take your breath. You can't believe what a flathead Ford sounds like. This guy has built all of this car himself. It's amazing. And and Ken, can you tell us a little bit about this car? How you got into the interest of going to Bonville and running 185 mile an hour? That's unheard of with a flathead Ford. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me down. It's been I'm an enjoyed. honor and a pleasure. I got started in flathead Fords, first of all, by Clint Bivens. I met up with him more than 20 years ago, and I was inspired by the flathead Ford motor. I had a couple of old cars, and I bought one that had a blown engine, and I said, there's no way I'll put a Chevy in it. Is this so, your first flathead project? Is this where you started? This flathead motor was in my street car for okay. eight years. I took it out and I put it in the race car, and because I went to Bonneville with a friend of mine in 2005, we were taking a land speed car to Pebble Beach to sell it. Well, we showed up at Bonneville Salt Flats, and because there was a significant car, they put us in the front row, treated us nice, and let me tell you something, when I saw that, I said, I can do this. It's, it's a, an amazing, amazing place. It really is. To go there to see it, I was hooked. Two years later, three years later, I had pulled the motor out of my street car, went through it. The guy, my friend, he had a car. We put the motor in his car. We went out in 2008, went 138 miles an hour with my street car, street motor. Mm -hmm. Brought it home, took it apart, did a little more. Went back in 10, went 148 on a 153 record. Well, what's amazing to me is that looking at this car, the technology that you put into it, and your background that you had, you got to be gifted. I mean, your worst nightmare, you couldn't hardly dream something like this to me. I mean, the technology, it, it's all common sense thinking. I know you, I heard you tell me the other day that you laid down in front of this car for two hours just looking at the nose of it and looked up and there was an eagle. Yeah, American Eagle. American Eagle. And you told the guy to build a nose, the shape of the beak on that eagle. And there it is. And then the air scoop. And you wait, folks, you see what the engine looks like, and you hear it. But all of this he designed himself, and believe me, it, it runs. 185 mile an hour in that record. If you don't mind, Ken, would you maybe disrobe this monster and uh, <laughs> let us look at it? Wouldn't I would be glad it? to. It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm telling you. So when we came home in 2010, I realized after seeing the cars out there that it's about the air. It's about beating the air. You can have a lot, flatheads are somewhat limited in horsepower, but you've got to beat the air. So then I came home and built a purpose-built car. We were running this, an old street car. And we got down to the drawing board, and I connected with a gentleman by the name of David Beard. And um, I explained to him what I wanted to do. And um, after, he, he's a chassis builder in New Hampshire. And after I got done telling him what I wanted to do, and he got done laughing at me, thinking that was crazy. He sat down and... What'd your wife say? She didn't, she didn't think it was crazy, did she? Yeah, you know. no. problem. Yes. Yeah, my wife's a very patient woman. Um, but no, I talked to him and I said, this is what I want to build and this is why. And He's a very crafty young man and we got, to, got right down to it. And by 2012, I had this car built with a, road, with a street roadster nose on it. And um, we went out and broke a first record. Don't you look at that. 
That's amazing, folks. A 390 CFM carburetors, Hogan hand built intake, and the cylinder heads were blank. And uh, you did the combustion chambers on the cylinder heads, right? Tony Barron cast them for me, and I did all the, the machine work in the combustion chambers. Can you take this off so we can get the. Yeah, get this right on. I like to let them look at the headers on it. And they're handmade too, right? Yep. You didn't know it was going to put you to work, did you? It's all right. It'd be a shame not to show this. It's like a puzzle, then. It's just like a puzzle, and everything's got its place. Is this your heat sensors or CO2? Uh, oxygen sensors oxygen to sensors. measure the air fuel okay. rate. Oil filter. The engine, yep. uh, uh, generally, a flathead four doesn't come with an oil filter, but he has plumbed the block and drilled it for oil filter. Um, this is a Mallory flame thrower type distributor. That's actually a General Motors HEI distributor with a flathead base on it. Okay. That originally fitted a Chevrolet, probably? Well, DUI makes it. Okay. And they make the, the flathead base with a, like a 1973 mm -hmm. Chevrolet. And then your water pump, your water's up here in the tank. And where does this go here? Uh, that actually goes into the water tanks underneath here. Under you here. haven't been underneath yeah. here yet. That's okay. fuel tank in the front and the okay. fuel pump and water pump are side by side. Okay. Now, the design of the headers, why are they like that, curled around like that? Well, you want the true story? Yeah, yeah, I want to know. Well, you, you got to keep everything inside the car. If you see it from the front, if you, when as we're talking, if you get around and see it right from the front, mm -hmm. it's very sleek. A lot of people hang the exhaust out the side of the car, and it's just like putting your hand out the window at 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You're gathering a lot of air. Mm -hmm. So they've got to be a certain length to get the certain performance. And I'll tell you a funny story, not many people know this. I have, I live in the woods, and I'm trying to build these headers, and I'm like, how am I gonna fit these exhaust pipes in here? And I'm out in the woods, and you know what a stink horn mushroom looks like? Not really. If you look it up on the internet, it looks just like that. It comes up out of the ground, and it peels by three fingers, Peel right out of there just like that. It looks just like that header pipe. And uh, I got to ask you this you hadn't been drinking anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. no, no. And that's, you told me earlier you want to move the, the wheel in board more. So. On the rear. We're going to move the, the wheels okay. on the rear. We're working with air right now. Um, and it's coming off the ground in the rear and spinning the wheels yeah. as you go through the speed traps. Well, after about 175 or 80, it, tends, it gets pretty, pretty light in the rear. You've had to have them to do this yeah, way. Yeah. And then you also have in the, in the beginning that the nose lifted off the In ground. the beginning with the 32 grill shell in the Roadster class, you can't run a belly pan or as much aerodynamics. And um, the first pass in the Roadster class at 167, the front tires come off the ground. I think from talking to you, you feel like you got the power in the engine. I think we got the power. So now what you got to do is all about our, uh, the, the air and you got to get it to the ground where you can yep. drive it and uh, you've not been able to go full throttle yet. No, I've never had a, a, a full on run. I've never ever, I'm 12, 13, and 16. I've yet to have only 16 only because Bonneville was canceled and 14 and 15. But um, I've never had a full on run with it. It, it's, it gets light, before it was getting light in the front, now it's getting light in the back. But it's an education. Well, uh, and talking to me, you know I like engines. It's all about engines. With it's me. all about the engine. And, and I got the little flathead forward back here. Yep. 
Uh, some say that's the fastest little flat head forward round track in the country. Uh, you only lap the field two or three times every race, so you're all you're doing okay. So when I talk to you about this engine, I really get fired up because seeing what you've done has inspired me more to work more on mine. Yeah. And I would like for you, uh, if you would, take the time to fire that thing up. Let us hear what it sounds oh, like. Yeah. I, it, it's so impressive. Can you do that for us? We could do that. I appreciate it. Why, yeah, I am where I am is because of help of people. If you notice on the back of the car the special thanks people, those people are all over 70 with the exception of my wife. And they've all given to the project. And it's just well, it's, uh, many it, it, people have helped me along the way just making it happen. Well, they want to see it. They want to see the flathead board continue. Yeah. I mean, this is where racing started with this engine, flathead board. Yeah. I mean, this, of course, you're doing straight line, bondable racing, but in the early days, the flathead Ford engine is what propelled stock car racing, the modified Ford yep. just back yep. here. Yep. And we're still loving it today, still working on them. I mean, you've come <laughs> a long way here in just a few years. It's amazing, I'm, I'm telling you, when the people hear this thing crank up, they can't believe it's flathead forward. No. I mean, Everybody says big block Chevrolet. Even when I had this motor in my five-window coupe, I'd pull into a car show, I ran three-inch open exhaust on it, is what I ran on my coupe in front of the rear tires, like old stock car. Mm -hmm. And everybody, oh, it's a big block Chevrolet, it's a big block Chevrolet. And people are like, ain't no big block Chevrolet. They say, oh, it's got to be a big block Chevrolet. I'd pull into a spot, open the hood, and like, that's flathead. You know, 
Ken to run 185. You told me the car weighed about 3,000 pounds. Yep. And you know the frontal area of the car. Is there a formula that you have that you can compute how much horsepower and torque this engine is putting out to go that fast? I've been told by people that race at Bonneville a lot, it takes just about 600 horsepower to go 200 miles an hour. 600 horsepower? Yeah. Between 550 and 6. And that's 110 octane gas, not, not alcohol? That well, no, that's, that's how much horsepower it takes. To so go that fast. They say whether you've got a blown engine or a fuel engine, or it takes about 550, 600 horsepower to go 200 miles an hour. And the class I know the air will limit you. I mean, it's that's why there's a variant, you know. But the class that you run in, you do a little change to accommodate that class. Well, the class I'm in now is a fuel modified fuel roadster. Okay. So Man. I'm running a naturally aspirated engine with, and I ran a 150 nitrous on it okay. in that, third and fourth gear. So you know how much horsepower that it takes to run that fast. Yeah. And how many people tell you that you can't get that out of one of these engines? Well, I'm guessing naturally aspirated, the motor should be around 400 horse. And I ran a 150 shot, which would have given me 550. I guess the car on paper to go about 192, 194 is what I was suspecting. 200 is always a dream. The red hat's where everybody yeah. wants to be. And I figured we'd get there. Um, Track conditions were a little slippery, and maybe the wind was against me. Again, you don't ever know. It's like you do your best preparation, and you show up, and yeah. that's what you get. A lot of hard work and dedication and a big passion. The cars like I race, the modifieds, running the, the speed that we're running now, it takes about 250 horsepower. Yeah. And that's a real good engine. Yep. Yeah. And to get what you're getting out of this, you say 450? I'm guessing around 400, 400. without the nitrous. Okay. Then 150 in nitrous, so it's clo it's pushing 550 horse. Well, I got to talk to you some more to find out what you've done. <laughs> get, get <mad> <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. Uh, it's got to be building a lot of cylinder pressure to get the pressure and the sound right here. I mean, you can tell it's got a lot of horsepower. Yeah. And um, I mean, I've worked real hard on mine, and it it's louder than my competition, but it's nowhere near what you have. It's, it's, you know, it's like you know, it's, when it's your life, you work it. Mm -hmm. And you, you create an image of where you want to be, and that's hopefully where you get, you know. It's, well, you know. does your wife ever say, like mine, said, Bill, you just won the race, you lapped all the cars, why do you come back and want to work on it some more? Oh, my wife's done, she doesn't want to ask that anymore. She knows. It's faster. You got to go faster. <laughs> Well, you don't see my wife down here, do you? <laughs> exactly. No, you got to go faster. you got to work harder. It's, you know, I tell people they wonder why I do this, and it's because I want to find out if I'm as smart as I think I am. That's, that's right. I mean, you have a passion for it, and, and um, now you're a little different. I was born into racing, yeah. and I grew up around it. And I know Sheila, my wife, she's, she enjoys it. She helps me a lot. Yeah. really does. And she knows the car's pushing, or if it's loose, she does tire temperatures for me, and She's real knowledgeable now about stock car racing. And I think just looking at this car, she's looked at it and said, man, that's, I just can't understand. Well, her first expression was, there's no scratches on it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, I think I could uh, become a fan of Bonville soft lap racing. I want to go out there and watch this sometime or another. Well, I won't we'll, be book it. we'll be booking rooms in January. <laughs> Well, you know, the guy over in uh, Mosul, Don Miller, has been out there several times with his yep. little Penzoil yellow roaster, and uh, I've talked to him about going out and watching it. I think that should be on anybody's bucket list, you know. To... If you're a motor guy, if you're an engine guy, you've got to go to Bonneville. It's sort of laid back in a way. It's, it's right very laid course. back. It's very personal. You can walk into a pit and watch what's going on on a $3 million team, or you could watch go into a pit on a $50 team. And if you're not careful, they'll put you to work. How many Either passes? one of them. It, hey. it's, that's why I love that racing. Yeah. Well, how many passes a day did you get to make? I, I'm pretty ambitious. I get up very early. My team gets up very early. My family is my team. My wife and three children, they come out and they work it. And it's hard work. And I'm usually the first one as best I can to be in first in line. And it's real hot out there, too. In the morning, it's nice. 65 degrees in the morning. And it's good. 
but depending on the track conditions, depending on how many um, courses they have set up, you could wait sometimes four hours to get another run. That many cars? Or that many cars, and it takes time. You've got to run the car down the track, and they've got to make sure it safely exits. There's a lot of safety out there. Because any of the fire apparatus or safety vehicles could be up to two to three miles away. It's a long time to get to you if you're upside down. You I know? saw you on the video, and there's a, a big chain of mountains out there right yeah. in the middle of the, of the desert. Or yeah. the salt, salt it's like a desert, yeah. And they call it what the floating, floating mountain. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, on the video, I can you come, just can't see you. But if you come in sight, and that thing's trucking in there, and it's a meow. Yeah, you can tell that thing's flying, but the sound is just, it's something else. Just to hear it come and go and out of sight, this speed, all about speed. It's not, it's, and if you're a motor guy, there's nothing better than hearing a big cubic inch engine with open exhaust with a brick on the pedal. Give you a rush. Oh, just listening, you know, just hearing it, it really is. It's, it's, it's an awesome place, it really is. I know today, Waddell Wilson, he's built a lot of winning engines. Two championships with David Pierce and Tom Moody. He walked up looking at this day and fired it up and he's screaming here and here. That was so impressive upon him. And he likes the fatty poles too. Yeah. Uh, it made a big impression upon him. He he was amazed. And I am too. I mean, I, I, I could talk to you about this for a week. And uh, I guess we can learn off one another from what I do and what yeah. you do. And, yeah. Well, that's how you get it. I got it passed to me, and I'm willing to give it to the next person because it was given to me. And that's what you have to do. You know, it's, it's what it is. Because, like my friend Jim says, I'll tell you everything I know, but you're not going to listen to me anyways. So I heard you talking today also <laughs> about the air sitting in the seat that sometimes when you go make a change on it, that you have to force your head back against the rest back here so you can see where you're going. This year was bad. I, my head, the, the shaking of the wind in your face, it was like my head was on a vibrator. I couldn't see. I had to hold my head against the back of the seat to keep the, my head from rattling. The BB's up there, you know, rolling around. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess where you're at right now, you've got the horsepower. It's all about hour, the air, and... Uh, you're going to spend many hours on this thing working on it. And then you're going probably in the spring to the wind tunnel or yep. before spring? No, not before spring because winter's already hit in New England. It snowed there a couple of days ago. Yeah. So we'll probably work on it all winter and come down April, May. And you're going to make some changes and go to the wind tunnel yep. and, and test right there in the wind tunnel. Yep. Before, during, and after yeah. to see what we can end up with. So, you know, test it as it is right now to see if did it really lift or not. I mean... There's a lot going on at speed. And you're trying you, to compute all this in your brain. Yeah. And well, the way you find out the lift, they, they tie it down on scales, right? Yep. And they take a reading of the scales. And when they got that wind tunnel going, and you're making your first test, they'll take a reading on the scales. If the scales got lighter, they know it's still trying to lift. Yeah. So then you shut the fan down and make another change and probably work 30 minutes to hour and then step back and watch it again and see what your scales do. And if they go to gaining the numbers, you're putting pressure on it so you know you're in the right direction. Now, as long all, as there's no drag. Yeah, and I started to say doing all that, um, drag is horsepower. Takes the horsepower. Oh, yeah. So you've got to reach a happy medium somehow, though, right? Well, if we could keep it neutral, that'd be fine. The front end room? Well, I mean, no, neutral as far as, you know, I've got however many pounds of weight on the rear tires now, if we could just leave that there, that'd be fine. Not lift it, not push it, you know. Now, wait a minute. You say neutral. I think what you're trying to tell me, if you started out on the scales, the wind tone is off, and it read 500 pounds here and 500 pounds over here, you bring it up in the wind tone, let's say 180, 90 mile hour, even 200 mile an hour. Neutral to me means front and rear is the same because of the ground track. Right, but right. to you, 
what you're talking about, you want to stay 500 pounds here and over there too. Yeah, I, I would think so. They're, provided the drag doesn't increase, because I guess they measure drag as well right. as lift and pressure. But sometimes, especially with the Roadster, you got to drive a Roadster. It's not like a streamliner, you point it and you go. It, it's usually a character building experience. Well, so I don't know if a little more weight, provided you don't get drag, would be good. But drag is horsepower. You're losing your, speed. In your test, you'll probably discover what would add weight in the wind tunnel. Test A, test B, C, and so forth. So when you go to Bonville and you set it up with your package, our package that was neutral, it stayed 500 pounds at 200 mm -hmm. mile an hour. If you make a run and, and the car tries to arrive, because sometimes the conditions there is not like it is in the wind tunnel, you agree? Because air out there is so thin and everything. It's so thin. I got my education this year with a density altitude of almost 7,000 feet. So it's a little bit different. <laughs> and you can't figure in those factors like you can on an engine dynamometer. <laughs> That's right. But, so if test B or C showed by making a change that you could add 20 pounds, Cross it. That would be something you'd try on the next run because right. you know what we need. Right. That's, that makes sense. I'm glad you explained that. When I go now, I know a little bit more about it. There you go. There you go. And, and it's a lot like that for these cars, too. It's, yeah. So we it's take power balance. temperatures, we weigh the cars. Yep. And when we get there, we know pretty much it's, it's close to being right. And the maximum that we'll generally do is just make our pressure change. Yep. If you got to go to turn and wrench, it's not, you wasn't ready. That's why when I go out there, I take basically a lunchbox full of tools because mm -hmm. I've been through the motor, I've tested the motor, I've been through the suspension, I've measured everything 10 times, and you know what? It's what you get because working out there is, I mean, you can do what you have to do, but it's not a good environment to be taking yeah. things apart. You know? And everything is metal rust when you get back, doesn't it? Bad. Uh, yeah. That's why the chassis on the car, the suspension, the chassis, um, axle, Rear differentials all been powder coated. All the tin work you see, except for the nose, the intake, it's all powder coated because the powder coating lasts better. And if you paint it and you come back, it's all turns to rust. Well, it's a beautiful car, and in the pictures and videos that I've seen of Bondle, they take pride in the machine, and there's so much passion you can just see it. And it, you know, I love to watch them and look at them. I just got to go and see it in person. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ken, for. Tell me about this, and maybe one day you can come to watch one of our races and yep. see what I would goes like on. that. You I would like that very much. Well, thank you all. Right. And thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure, for real. Thank you so much. The stars are bright and the moon is low. Revenue man coming up behind. Betty thinks he's gonna catch me with this load of moonshine. But I cut the lights and mashed the gas Turn a curb into a straight line You're gonna play this game with me You got to know how to drive If you lose on Sunday You just lose a race But when you're driving with the devil, boys There ain't no second place Burning rubber to burning mash 